The strangers from the internet are standing outside. The strangers from the internet have come from far and wide. But I cannot receive them. I hardly believe in them. Hello, and welcome back to Shadow Yaddo. I'm Elena Richardson. Last Sunday was summer solstice, the day with the most light. Summer is officially in full swing. Today, we'll consider this idea of light triumphing over dark. I know, I know, this sounds a little bit Game of Thronesy, but stay with me, because we have the luminous writer Joanne Beard in conversation with Pat Towers, a revered editor and friend to many writers. And we'll share some news about a really special Yaddo event coming up this fall. Art Saved Us, Let's Save Art, with star Shayna Taub as our featured guest of honour. Shayna is a supremely talented singer-songwriter, and we'll venture to say she's one of the next household names. In just a moment, we'll hear one of her songs. But first, if you don't already know Joanne Beard's work, you've been missing out. Her lucent prose could win the Best Sentence Award. She's the author of the novel In Zanesville and two essay collections, The Boys of My Youth and her recent book, Festival Days. As you'll hear, she has a profound affinity for language and, to quote an interview with her in the New York Times, a lifelong love of dogs, horses and rowdy boys. Here's Joanne in conversation with editor extraordinaire Patricia Towers. Joanne Beard, it's very nice to be here with you. Thank you, Pat. It's great to be with you, too. So here's this wonderful new book, among the other wonderful books, and this one is Festival Days. I find reading you beautiful, unsettling, heartbreaking, breathtaking, breath-holding, sometimes terrifying, transcendent. You have this intense sense of life and its fragility and its amazements and terrors. Well, this extraordinary piece in here called Werner, about the artist you met at Yaddo, actually. It's the story of a man who was living in an old tenement building on the top floor with his cat, an artist, and he is caught in a fire. How did you decide that you wanted to write about that? I was at Yaddo just going to spend six weeks writing whatever I felt like writing every day. I didn't have a project that I was working on. And I would drive over to Skidmore and listen to a reading. And then one night I went over and I listened to Robert Stone read a story that actually turned out to be an excerpt from a book, but it was about skin diving, going underwater and having his oxygen tank failed. So he's reading it to us in an emphysemic voice where he can barely get enough breath to read into the microphone. The whole place was spellbound. And it was the most incredibly gripping story, but the whole thing lasted like five minutes, you know, because otherwise you would drown if you didn't have oxygen. But he just elongated it until you were just breathlessly listening to this breathless man reading this breathless story. And when he got done, the whole place was stunned and everybody started clapping. And I drove back to Yaddo and I said, I really want to write a story like that where every bit of the action happens over five minutes. And the next morning, I was at the breakfast table and somebody was asking if anybody at the table knew what the interior of an ambulance looked like. And Werner said, Oh, I do. And he described it. And then somebody said, how did you know what an ambulance looked like? And then he told his story. And 
So I followed him out of the dining room, and I said, Werner, I really want to write your story. This book, Festival Days, begins with a wonderful little short piece that you actually did for O Magazine when I was there called Late Night with Sheba, your lovely dog, who was in her 15th year of life and was not doing well. And it was very hard for you to let her go. Yeah, she was my post-divorce dog. I mean, I had her when I was married, but then I got divorced and we divided the dogs. And she's the one that I got. So I went off to live the new part of my life. And I fled the town I lived in, and I fled with Sheba. So she was doubly important to me. She wasn't just my dog, but she was like the companion who served as a bridge between that life with my husband and the new life that was just about me. When it was time to have to let her go, it felt really momentous. It felt like more than losing a dog, it felt like losing a part of my own life and my own history. Yeah. So this lets us know, too, what an extraordinary feeling you have for animals, dogs, but not just dogs. You animate so many different animals. This deep empathy with living things, really, and even inanimate things that you somehow animate, a stone or a piece of the earth, but in particular, the raccoon, the coyotes, that wonderful story, Coyotes, where you're in the mind of the coyote. It is unsettling because it was so real and so much in the sensibility of the coyote who was prowling and killing Which brings us to you somehow managed to address in the most straightforward, plain way, death. It's almost the way when you're very young and you think, this is not possible. How can I not exist? Somehow that question for me, as I'm reading you, is always in the back of what you're writing in the sense of the incredible aliveness of the world. I know exactly what you're talking about. I feel like I've always had that kind of terrible existential dread. That's the kind of child I was. That from the first moment that I realized that I was going to die and that my mother was going to die and maybe even my sister was going to die, I felt traumatized by life. And also by all of the other deaths that were happening around me, you know, because I came from farm country. So the chickens that went into the chicken salad and the pigs, you know, that you think, well, but I love the pigs. And they seemed more alive than we were in their strangeness. And then to have somebody explain to you that that's where bacon comes from or that's where pork chops come from. I mean, it all feeds into the same existential confusion and dread of not only my own death, but what we have to assume is the horrifying deaths of the animals who surround us. Yes, their innocence and our consciousness, so that we're somehow not innocent in the same way. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm thinking, too, of the, in the boys of my youth, that you're very, very little. You're in the crib with Hal, your boy doll, and this wonderful memory of he was more important to you than your parents. Oh, no, he really wasn't. By the way, his real name was not Hal. I couldn't even put his real name in there. I had to change his name. I don't know why, but it just felt like so naked to call him by his real name. Again, it goes back to what you were talking about, feeling about inanimate objects the same way you feel about animate ones. I bet you had some version of that also. Probably, because I recognize it so immediately. Oh, the moon looks at you funny in one story. Everything is animated in this way. It all comes alive, which is what happens in your writing, which is so amazing. Well, there's that wonderful poem of Dennis Johnson's that I hadn't read. Do we want to get so dark as to read that poem? You know, I'll tell you something about that poem. I read that poem sometimes to my students, and I read it alongside another poem by Dean Young. And Dean Young's poem is all about joy, and Dennis Johnson's poem is all about grappling with darkness. And it's really interesting for students to see that amazing writing can come out of both joy and darkness. So I think that's why I pulled that poem in 
to that essay. Okay, I'll read the whole thing because it's so beautiful. It's called Now by Dennis Johnson. Whatever the foghorns are the voices of feels terrible tonight, just terrible. And here by the window that looks out on the waters but is blind, I have been sleeping, but I'm awake now. In the night I watch how the little lights of boats come out to us and are lost again in the fog wallowing on the sea. It is as if in that absence not many but a single light gestures and diminishes like meaning through speech, negligently a dance to the calling of the foghorns like the one note they lend from voice to voice. And so does my life tremble. And when I turn from the window and from the sea's grief, the room fills with a dark lushness and foliage nobody will ever be plucked from. And the feelings I have must never be given speech. Darkness, my name is Dennis Johnson. And I am almost ready to confess it is not some awful misunderstanding that has carried me here, my arms full of the ghosts of flowers, to kneel at your feet almost ready to see how at each turning I chose this way, this place, and this verging of ocean on earth, with the horns claiming I can keep on if only I step where I cannot breathe. My coat is leprosy, and my dagger is a lie. Must I shed them? Do I have to end my life in order to begin? Music, you are light. Agony, you are only what tips me from moment to moment, light to light and word to word. And I am here at the waters, because in this space between spaces where nothing speaks, I am what it says. Mm. He is amazing. It's an amazing, beautiful poem. I'm so glad I came across it through you. We're getting very dark here. I also want to say that in this book there are many deaths, but... The book is so alive, and the way that you write and the way that you see is so present in this very living moment that it doesn't feel dark in that way. It feels like being awake to the universe in this really wonderful way. It's true. The book is dark, but for me, reaching the age that I am right now, death begins to happen around you. It just does. Yeah. You know that. And also, like this quote, dark poem by Dennis Johnson is also filled with light because it's brilliant, because he was brilliant. And so to me, it feels almost the same as the Dean Young poem that's all about joy. And you're absolutely right. Well, life is all around and death is all around, which is exactly true. But we mostly don't look at it straight on. You kind of look at it straight on. I do look at it straight on. I don't know why I do that. It was hard on me when I was a little kid. Now I sort of like it. But just what I was saying a little earlier about the pigs, how we loved the pigs so much when we were kids because they had those rubbery noses. And I have neighbors down the road from me right now who every year they get a little pink pig. And every time I drive by their house, which is every day, I go, oh, no, the pig is getting bigger. And in the fall, one day the pig is not going to be there. I can't stand it. Yeah. And so my partner, Scott, is like, why do you have to say that every time we drive by the pig? And I go, I can't help it. How can you not say it? He sees it as the thing. He sees it. But I have to say it. No. Well, that's exactly because all of these, these wonderful animals, not just the pig, but I'm going to say the mouse. <laughs> there's a mouse and there's a turtle, the turtle, which made me remember David Sedaris's turtle, for all these things. Yeah. Joanne, I love reading you. and Thank you, Pat. I really, really appreciate this. And I'm really glad we can go out now and have a drink oh, together. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Dog goes woof, cat goes meow, bird goes tweet, and mouse goes squeak. Cow goes moo, frog goes crow, and the elephant goes toot. Dogs say quack, and fish go blub, and the seal goes ow, ow, ow. But there's one sound that no one knows. What does the fox say? What the fuck say? 
This fall, Yado is hosting a very special event. Art Saved Us, Let's Save Art, a national benefit held Wednesday, September 29th at the Bowery Hotel in New York City. The live program will be hosted by Broadway supernova Michael Uri with a performance by acclaimed singer songwriter Shayna Taub. I wanted to play this Nick song by Shayna because it kept buzzing in my brain as I listened to Pad and Joanne in conversation. Its zingy lyrics remind me of Joanne's unflinching gaze, her profound ability to look at the world straight on. Joanne's an adult in a moment where there aren't many around, when the zeitgeist is tantrum prone, stubbornly evasive, dangerously immature. So, here's Shayna Taub with Where Are the Grown Ups? The bully has taken the playground. The smallest are trembling in fear Everyone's yelling and shouting And I'm standing here I'm waiting for them to come running Aren't they supposed to arrive? Where are the grown-ups To save the day? Where are the grown-ups Grown-ups we've been waiting for Where are the grown-ups? The bully is building a fortress For only his friends at the top Slamming the rest into lockers Please make him stop I'm looking around for an answer I thought they'd be here by now the grown Shayna a little bit before I met her at Yaddo when she performed at Joe's pub. I couldn't believe how fantastic she was that night. I wasn't alone in noticing. She's now artist in residence at the Public Theatre and Elton John, or as we now say, Sir Elton, tapped her to collaborate with him on song lyrics for the upcoming Broadway musical The Devil Wears Prada. She's won numerous awards and is signed to Atlantic Records with two independent albums also, Visitors and Die Happy. Shayna is currently writing Suffragist, a new musical about Alice Paul and the American women's suffrage movement in the decade leading up to the passage of the 19th Amendment. All of that just scratches the surface of her achievements. If you want to catch with the public, that's a good idea. And a great idea is to join us on September 29th when you can hear Shayna and Toast Yaddo. I'd love to see you there. Thanks for tuning in. Big thanks to our producer, Christy Albano, sound engineer, CJ DeGenero, and to the artists who contributed music. In order of appearance, they are Joseph Keckler, 
for the adaptation of her theme music *Strangers from the Internet*. Ilves for *The Fox* and Shayna Taub for *Where Are the Grown Ups*. You can find more of Shayna's music on shaynataub.com. For information on how you can be part of our national benefit, visit yado.org. We'll see you for more Shadow Yado in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, let's all get back to worshiping the sun. Thank、you